Hello, and welcome to Conditional Probability and Independence. My name is Tuesday J. Johnson. I'm a lecturer at the University of Texas, El Paso, and an assistant professor at Doña Ana Community College. Let's start with the definition, as we are known to do. If A and B are events with the probability of B not zero, right, so probability of B has to be possible, then the probability of A, given that B occurred, is probability of A, and then this line means such that, so A such that B equals the probability of the intersection of A and B divided by the probability of B. All right, so probability of A, given that B happened, is the probability of A intersect B divided by the probability of B. So let's compute the indicated quantity. If we know the probability of B is 0.5, the probability of the intersection is 0.2, then in order to find the probability of A given B, using our formula, we take the intersection divided by the probability of B. 0.2 divided by 0.5 is 0.4. Let it be easy. If we're given that the probability of A given B is 0.2 and the probability of B is 0.4, we can find what the intersection is. We'll set up our equation the same way. Probability of A given B is the probability of the intersection divided by the probability of B. So this becomes 0.2 equals the probability of the intersection over 0.4. Multiply both sides by 0.4. We'll have 0.2 times 0.4 is equal to, on the right-hand side, the denominator cancels out when I multiply by 0.4, so I'll only have the intersection. The probability of A intersect B is 0 0.08. Not a very good chance that it actually happened. If the probability of A given B is 0.4, the probability of the intersection is 0.3, we can find the probability of B. Set up our formula as it's given to us. Probability of A given B is the probability of A intersect B over the probability of B. Substitute our known values. 0.4 equals 0.3 over P of B. To solve for the probability of B, we'll multiply both sides by a probability of B and then divide by 0.4. Probability of B is 0.3 over 0.4, which is 75%, or 0.75. Now, what does that mean in an example problem? What does that mean when we don't have just numbers? It's not just a number manipulation. Let's take a look. Let's find the conditional probabilities of the indicated events when two fair, distinguishable dice are rolled. So the sum is 5 given that the green one is the green one is not the number one so the sum is 5 that's our a value the sum is 5 we're distinguishable i write down every possible thing that is in the uh, in the set the sum is 5 1 4 2 3 3 2 4 1 i just got lost right there at the colon given that will tell us our b so b the green one is not 1 so I have to take out the, the 4, 1 here. Now the probability that the sum is 5, given that the green one is a not a 1, well, how many times do I have a sum of 5 and the green one is not 1? Three times. Uh, how many different t uh, rolls of two distinguishable dice are there? 36. What's the probability of B? The probability of B, the green one is not 1, means we take out 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, 1, and 6, 1. We remove 6 out of our overall set, so that's 30 out of 36. Dividing two fractions that have the same denominator, when you uh, multiply by the reciprocal, those denominators cancel out. We get 3 tenths, which sim 3 thirtieths, which simplifies to 1 tenth. Find the conditional probability of the indicated event, two fair... Two fair distinguishable dice are rolled. Oh my goodness, my tongue's getting tied. The red one is five, given that the sum is six. Okay. A, the red one is five. So all the different rolls using two dice where the red one is five. Given that, so this is our B, the sum is six. B, the sum is six, happens with one, five, two, four, three, three, four, two, and five, one. Now, Probability of A given B. Probability the red one is a 5, given that the sum is 6. 
How many things do set A and set B have in common? They have only one. So the probability of the intersection is one out of the 36 different rows. Probability of B, sum of six, there are five different ways we can add to B6. Five out of 36 is the probability of the denominator. One out of 36 divided by five over 36 is one fifth, which is of course a point two. The sum is six, given that the dice have opposite parity. Remember, opposite parity means one's even and one's odd. So A, the sum is six. And I list all possible ways that I could get a sum of six with distinguishable dice. B, the dice have opposite parity. Opposite parity, so I have a roll of one with a two, four, and six, a two with one, three, and five, a three with two, four, and six, a four with one, three, and five, five with two, four, and six, and six with one, three, and five, right? So never does that give me a six, right? Notice every way to roll a, a six, two odds, two evens, two odds, two evens, two odds. Never will a sum of six have opposite parity so that probability of A intersect B is zero, zero out of 36. It's never going to happen. However, half of all 36 rolls are going to be of opposite parity, so 18 out of 36. But zero divided by 18, still a probability of zero. We will never have a sum of six if the dice have opposite parity. Couple more definitions. If A and B are events, then reworking the formula, we find that probability of A intersect B is probability of A given B times probability of B. Also, if the events, uh, the events A and B are independent, if the probability of A intersect B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. Uh, if two events are not independent, they're said to be dependent. But what does this really mean? And these two formulas are the same except for probability of A, probability of A given B. So we say that two events are independent if what happens in A makes no difference uh, with what happened in B. B has no effect on whether or not A has happened. All right, some examples. The table shows the results of a survey of 100 authors by a publishing company. Compute the following conditional probabilities. So an author is established given that she is successful. In order to find these probabilities, we're always going to have out of 100. So rather than use the decimal form of the probability, I, I put it in percentage form. Or I'm just using these numbers here as I know the two denominators will cancel out. I'll show you what I mean during this example, but I don't think I'll do it in the future. Um, the probability established given that, so intersected with the probability she's successful. So intersection, successful and established, that's 25 out of 100. The probability that she is successful, successful has a total of 30, 30 over 100, but if we are dividing fractions, we can multiply by the reciprocal. And that is how I got my fraction here. 25 over 30, the 100s cancel out. We can simplify 25 over 30 to get 5 6. I have a tendency of forgetting to write denominators when I know they're going to cancel out. I apologize for that, but that's where that came from. An author is successful given that she is established. Now, this is the opposite. Now, this time, my denominator is going to be probability of established. So successful, intersected, established, there's 25 out of 100. The probability established, all established, 80. So 25 out of 80. So given that she's established, so out of all established authors, uh, only five out of 16 or five sixteenths of them are successful. I think you know, we saw we had a better chance of being established given that she was successful rather than the other way around. An author is a new author, so event A, our first event, is new author N, given that he is unsuccessful, so U. So the probability of N intersect U, 15 
out of 100. Divided by the probability of you unsuccessful authors, there are 70 of them, 15 out of 70, simplifies to 3 fourteenths. An unsuccessful author is established. And see, that's the problem with memorizing key words or key phrases to know what opportunities to use. A lot of times, the language that we speak is not directly math translatable. We need to rewrite the language so that we can interpret into math. So an unsuccessful author is established. We're going to rewrite this. We want to find the probability that an author is established given that they are unsuccessful because we know they're an unsuccessful author. That's given. I want to know about the established ones. So probability of established intersect unsuccessful is 55 divided by the probability they are unsuccessful because I'm only looking at unsuccessful authors, 70. 55 over 70 is 11 over 14. For our last example, an established author is successful. This is the same as we saw in number two. Uh, we saw an author who was a successful author given she is established. Well, hard for me to think about that one, but it's the same thing. Right, an established author. So this is what's given. What's given is going to end up in our denominator. What do I want to know? Successful. But I want successful and established. Successful and established, 25. All established is 80. 5 sixteenths. Conditional probabilities. Now, given that this one thing happened, what's the probability now of another event? That's it. Thanks for listening. Have a great day.